Hi, so in this video, I'm going to talk about reading and listening strategies. Okay, now the reason I've put these two together is because most of the strategies are actually relevant for both reading and listening. Uh, we often talk about reading strategies and there's a lot of literature about reading strategies. And if you look online, there's lots and lots of content about reading strategies. But if you look at them, they're actually very, very relevant for listening also. So I've put these two together, reading and listening strategies, uh, but just be aware that um, you know some of them are only for reading, but most of them are uh, generally relevant for both of these language skills. Okay, so as I mentioned, if you look online, you'll find lots of content about reading strategies. Um, I've just taken kind of a, a random sample here uh, from various websites. And another interesting thing to notice is that every uh, everything that you look at about reading strategies has a different amount of reading strategies and uses different language to describe them. So it seems like there isn't really an overall agreement about how many reading strategies there are or listening strategies um, or exactly what they should be called or which ones should be included. Uh, you can see the examples here. Some of them have six, uh, some of them have seven. If you look online, you'll find lots of variety in what exactly what is a reading skill or isn't. Okay, so just be aware of that and, you know, just have a look around. I think it doesn't really matter, you know, exactly how many reading strategies there are. Uh, it's just worth being aware of what they are because you then you can you know make sure that your lessons include activities for various reading strategies or listening strategies. Okay, so as learners develop, we can model or demonstrate reading strategies and support or scaffold our students to develop these skills. Okay, so for very young learners. Um, the learners themselves would not be using the reading strategies. For very young learners, uh, you would be teaching reading in terms of phonics and sight words and things like that. But you could be demonstrating through storytelling, through using big books at the front of the class. You could be demonstrating the kinds of strategies that good readers use. Um, and as the learners develop, as readers, then you can start moving the responsibility towards the students and getting them to help you with the reading strategies. Uh, I've put another note here as well. Most reading strategies can also be considered as listening strategies. So that's really important because, you know, listening is a very, very important skill that we should be uh, including and scaffolding in language lessons. And it's very easy to take the ideas from reading strategies and apply them to listening lessons as well. Okay, so let's have a look at some reading strategies now. Okay, so here we have six reading strategies and the first one is predict. I've put this one first because this is actually a strategy that you're going to be, you could be doing before you actually read or listen. So you could have students uh, guessing about what's going to happen. You could give some kind of hint or clue, for example, a picture or a title. You could be looking at the, the cover of the story, for example. Uh, you could ask students true or false questions and they can guess the answers before predicting. Um, so there's lots of things you could do to predict. And this really sets up students' interest and it sets them up for successful uh, comprehension. Okay, the next one is visualize. Now, as we listen and as we read, we visualize things, okay? So we can use that in our uh, teaching. Uh, it could be visual kind of activities like drawing or finding pictures, um, or it could be having students kind of describing what they're imagining as they read or they listen. Okay, the next one here is question. Now, in teaching, the teacher asks many questions, but this is not the teacher asking questions. This means the reader or the listener asking questions. So as you read or as you listen, we automatically uh, ask questions to ourselves to check our understanding and to guess what might come next and to kind of connect things together about, you know, different information sources that we're, we're uh, getting input from. So question means the learner 
thinking of questions and then answering those questions through listening and reading. Okay, the next one here is connect. Now there are different ways of connecting. There is text to self, which is personalizing, text to text, and text to world. There is actually a fourth called text to media, which means connecting the text to media. Now what these are, are different ways of connecting information or content from the text to something else, such as the learner, or another text, or other things in the world that we know about or that we're aware of. And text to media is connecting things that we listen or read to things that we know about from media, for example, televisions, cartoons, uh, radio, YouTube videos, and characters, and movies, and things like that. Um, this is really good. You can also do this in the pre-stage before listening and reading, but you can also do this uh, as a reading or listening strategy and have learners, you know, making connections, thinking of connections, uh, doing worksheets related to that. Okay, the next one here is identify. Now, identify uh, could often mean things like the main idea or the main parts of the story, the beginning, the middle and the end, and identifying what changes, what is the problem, what is the solution, that kind of thing. Um, it could also mean identifying the, um, the kind of the argument that's being made. For example, in, in a newspaper article, there may be different sides or there may be a bias involved. Um, in some of the text. So it's identifying kind of the argument of the author, identifying the, uh, you know, any biases that might be in there as well. Okay. Um, for young learners, identifying could be very simple things like w w which part of the story is happy, which part of the story is sad. Okay. So there's different types, there's different ways of identifying. Okay, the final one here is evaluate. And I've put this at the end because evaluating is generally something we do after we have read or listened. And after understanding it well, we are able to evaluate what we have, uh, you know, the text that we've been reading. So evaluating could be something as simple as, did you like what you read? Um, what did you like about it? your favorite characters, your favorite part of the story. Um, you could be also, uh, for higher level students, you could be evaluating the, the truth or, you know, um, the, the different viewpoints in the article. You know, were there any good arguments that you read in the newspaper article, for example? Okay, so there's different ways of evaluating. It could be something very simple or it could be something more in depth, kind of, you know, debate topics and, and so on. Okay, now what's missing? From here, infer, okay. Now, infer is a reading strategy that means finding things that's missing or guessing things that are missing from the text, okay? So have a look at this, uh, this short example here. John was running for the bus. Every morning was the same. So here's a very short text. What can we guess about John? From the short text, what kind of things can we guess about him? He's running for the bus. Every morning is the same. Well, we can guess perhaps he's going to school or work. Okay. Every morning is the same. So he's maybe he's, he's every morning going to school or work. Now, he might be late because he's running for the bus. Right. So he might have got up late. We could maybe say he's unorganized. If he's running late every morning, then perhaps he's an unorganized person. Maybe he skipped breakfast. Maybe he got up late, missed the alarm, ran out of, the, ran out of his home and ran for the bus. Maybe he skipped breakfast. It doesn't sound like he had a very slow, leisurely breakfast, does it? Okay, so there's lots of things we can guess about John. Um, notice that none of those things are actually stated. None of those things are included in the text that we read, but those are all extra things that we can kind of guess that perhaps 
these things are true about his life. Oh yeah, and he went to bed late as well. That's another thing we could guess. Okay, so uh, that's infer. Let's move on to skimming. Now, skimming is, this is one example that is just a reading strategy. This is not something we can do with listening because this involves reading and how we move our eyes when we're reading. So skimming means very quickly running our eyes over a text to try and find some information. So here are two questions in red. Have a look. Is this a real story or a fairy tale? Who are the two characters in this story? Okay, so what I want you to do is very quickly, this, uh, the text in black in the white box, uh, very quickly look through there and, and find, is it a real story, is it a fairy tale, and who are the two main characters? Go. Okay, so hopefully you did that quickly. The idea here is not reading for detail and reading for understanding everything. It's just quickly finding the key points or the questions uh, that you have to find the answers for. So is this story real or a fairy tale? Well, you can probably see by the princess and the frog and the frog speaking at the end. You can probably guess it's a fairy tale. And who are the two main characters? Well, the princess and the frog. Those are the two main characters. Now, if you skimmed that properly and quickly, you probably didn't get all of the other content and information in the text. So that's what skimming is about. It's just quickly going through to find something specific. Okay. And this is another example, which is a strategy that's only a reading strategy. This is not a listening strategy. And again, it's something that we do with our eyes as we are reading. So scanning, this is scanning. On the next page, I want you to tell me how much a burger basket costs. So you'll be able to find a burger, ba burger basket and find the price of a burger basket. Are you ready? Okay, so I hope you found it by now. Okay, so a burger basket, you can find down in the bottom left corner, the answer is $1.29, okay. Now, the reason I did this is to show you how your eyes might move when you are scanning. Now, when you're scanning, it doesn't mean you're, you're going over line by line. So skimming is line by line. Scanning, your eyes kind of move randomly, kind of trying to find information somewhere on the page, okay? We do this often with uh, menus, but you might also do this with a newspaper or a magazine. When you open a magazine, you don't usually start reading in the top left of the magazine. Uh, when you open a new page, your eyes just kind of randomly look over the magazine you're reading, looking at different pictures, looking at different titles, maybe deciding what you want to read first or, you know, what's the most interesting thing on the page. So that would be scanning the page. OK, so those are some reading strategies. And I just want to mention that there are lots and lots of uh, uh, useful resources online about reading strategies. Uh, here is a good video called uh, uh, Tutoring Tips reading comprehension strategies. It's an animated video that you can watch on YouTube. And in this video, they introduce, I think it's four different reading strategies that are kind of similar to the ones that we covered today. Okay, so uh, think about these strategies when you're teaching reading or listening. They're very useful for thinking about different types of activities that students can do. And you can demonstrate, model, scaffold and do activities involving these strategies. Okay, thank you.